it's now 1 March 2022. In the Ukraine, the war goes on. That's the only thing that I want to tell about it. And that's a very bad thing. That's my idea. Anyway, uh, I want to talk about electronics. And here is the first schematic of 26 February 2022. And in this video I have showed the power Darlington made with power transistors. And uh, not only power transistors, but especially high voltage transistors. These are the uh, tested high voltage transistors. The S2000, 2000, not 200, but 2000A, or the BUV47R. They are uh, high voltage transistors, and you can surely find the data sheet on the World Wide Web. Study it, you can see the maximum current that it can handle, the maximum wattage power that it can handle, uh, given a combination of a certain voltage and a certain current. Uh, but the most uh, interesting thing was that the circuit started to oscillate. It's this power supply. I cannot open it now, it was in an earlier video. Here are the protective resistors that protect in a certain way the maximum current. There are many other videos and I want to give the links in the description. The problem was in this video the oscillation. So due to the extremely sloppy wiring here and it was also in an earlier video, the whole thing started to oscillate. When, um, on a certain moment, the uh, voltage was lifted up by giving the Darlington, and that's here, by giving the Darlington, with the help of that 470k potentiometer, somewhat more voltage. Say, this is a classic series regulator, uh, when we add the voltage here, the output voltage will also go up and when we pinch down the uh, voltage to the base of the uh, driver transistor, the voltage at the collector of the, uh, the end transistor will go down. All very classical, many videos about that principle are on my YouTube channel anyway. And this is an important capacitor, CX. It sets the hum suppression, very important. But what was the cure for this oscillation? At first, let's try to reproduce that oscillation. Turning now the knob here, and here, on a certain position of that knob, here we have that parasitic oscillation. And that's a very bad one. I, I cannot see the exact frequency, but uh, well, it's surely there. And when you, um, say, touch the circuit, the electronic circuit, uh, on certain positions with your finger, uh, though I cannot advise that to do that because it's 110 volts and it's a dangerous voltage. But anyway, uh, for instance, take a capacitor. So here is your your hand. Here's your hand, and take a capacitor in your hand, and then uh, with your body acting as a kind of mass touch with such a capacitor uh, the different points in the circuit and look at the same time on the oscilloscope what happens. Is the oscillation diminishing or not? Does it work? So this is a kind of test circuit to prevent that um, 
say a, a real uh, current a too high current can go through your body etc um, etc et so this is a kind of protective capacitor can be good value is 100 nanofarad on 350 volts I've done that here and I've also say uh, made these experimental connections with all these capacitors with this capacitor that's what I mean so with the capacitor to ground and then touch with the, the other side of that capacitor different points in the circuit emitter, collector, collector here, base here and at the same time looking to the oscilloscope you can see the effect uh, is the uh, parasitic oscillation pressed down um, does it uh, an, uh, resist no longer anymore etc etc and you will surely see all kinds of different effects when you do this test both with that capacitor in your hand be careful or with a capacitor that's connected here to the minus and the other part of the crocodile clip is in that case a, a test clip to do all these tests so finally I found this solution here we have that oscillation parasitic oscillation and here is a capacitor that's by the way a good quality capacitor it's also important to tell uh, use a capacitor that is made for such an aim this is 0 0.22 microfarad made for 250 volts AC so that is a capacitor that's useful for these tests and of course don't do these tests for instance with these tiny 100 nanofarad capacitors that only can handle perhaps 50 volts or so take a capacitor that really can do the job well this is the good capacitor and here we have the oscillation parasitic oscillation and when I connect here that crocodile clip to the capacitor the oscillation is gone and of course in that case parasitic oscillation is gone and of course do this test change at the same time uh, the value of the potentiometer turn the knob of the potentiometer that's here 470k I turn that knob now and see what happens on the scope you see kind of jumps in the voltage though they are not very substantial here there is perhaps a critical point and that has also to do with the amplification factor of the transistor this is more or less where you see this, this voltage jump uh, that is the critical position where the transistor can start to oscillate but because there is a capacitor now and I've forgotten to tell where that capacitor is and that's here between the collector that's very important of course I must not forget that here between the collector and the emitter there is a capacitor of this value 0 0.22 microfarad 0 0.22 microfarad or otherwise 220 nanofarads it's the same so this capacitor is responsible for removing the parasitic oscillation and it had to do say with the way that I showed uh, how to test such an experimental hobby circuit and in this case with a far too sloppy wiring that 
has given this problem. Now, even when you have a very neat wiring, very good wiring, very properly made wiring, you can encounter this problem. And I've encountered it in the past many more times when working on other uh, power Darlington circuits that had to do also this kind of job. Say, uh, input voltage is high, output voltage must be variable or low, etc. etc. And when you go to my YouTube channel, you can also see that you can use this circuit as a stabilized voltage unit. In fact, that's more or less the same when you use here a Zener diode. Many videos about that on my YouTube channel. But this is only the, uh, uh, say, explanation of curing that um, parasitic oscillation problem. So let's uh, disconnect that cap. And of course, when you disconnect that capacitor, there's not always directly the parasitic oscillation. It only happens on, say, a certain position of the potentiometer. You can see it, it, it starts again. So a very precise position of that potentiometer where, given all the stray capacitance in such a circuit, and the stray inductance, there is a critical moment where that oscillator, uh, sorry, where that uh, um, voltage regulator starts to oscillate. And in fact, it has to be found out in a more or less individual way. So connect the, the cap again. And it there's no longer parasitic oscillation. And when you look um, on, look to say these kinds of circuits on the World Wide Web or say from the 1980s, 1990s, there are many circuits that are made in the same way, were made in the same way. You, you sometimes also see that capacitor here. So, that was more or less all to tell. Thanks for watching. Pen over somewhat, finally. This is how the regulator looks. Of course, you see the voltage that's going up. And the current going down has everything to do with Ohm's law in this case. Uh, this is more or less a circuit that works completely in an ohms way, but that's always a problem. Uh, such a circuit can also work when it is not properly developed as a kind of oscillator. Anyway, hope it was a little bit clear. Thanks for watching. This was the solution. And well, there are many other ways to say uh, bring such a parasitic oscillation down, but this, this was more or less the key issue.